Well guys, welcome along to a vlog with a little bit of a difference. That's because in this vlog, instead of going traveling, this has arrived in the post and we're going to fit it. What is it? Do you need one? Yeah, of course you need one. So come on, step on board and I'll show you what it does. So guys, this arrived at my house about a week ago, so I've had plenty of time to have a look at it and see exactly how it should all go together. So let's see what's in the box, will we? All right, so lots of paperwork. The instructions, yeah, I, I know reading instructions is cheating, but look, in this case, you're gonna to have to do it. Okay, so the first thing we have is the screen, and there's a little cover for that as well. I'm not gonna need that cover because I'd be fitting this indoors, but if you were fitting it outdoors, you'd, you'd need the cover, and you would also need that little O-ring. Won't be using either of those. It also comes with a connector block. Then we have a lot of cable. All right, so one of the end of this cable is fitted with terminals and we see where they all go in a few moments. And it comes with this thing. This is a shunt. No, I said a shunt. It's a great word, isn't it? <laughs> and more instructions. So let's see what it does. So at the moment, my battery indicator tells me how many volts I have in my battery, but it doesn't tell me how full the battery is. It might say there's 13 volts in it, but that could be because I have the charger plugged in. As soon as I unplug the charger, it could drop down to anything. It could be 11 volts. So it doesn't tell me the state of charge. Another thing it doesn't tell me is how many amps I'm putting into the battery when I am charging it. Nor does it tell me how many amps I'm drawing out of the battery when I'm running a, an appliance. And nor does it tell me how long the batteries are going to last if I keep running, let's say, the fridge and I've no charge going in. This fella here will do all them things for me. And to be honest with you, the old gauge was great. It's lasted a long time. It's, it's, served, its, it's served its purpose, but now it's time to upgrade to one of these. So mounting anything like this is a little bit awkward. So what I've done is I've actually removed the whole panel and I've mounted the display here you can see the wires at the back and at the terminal block. You're probably wondering what are the other holes for? Well, I have a few other bits that I'm going to mount as well. There's a set of switches and then and a 240 volt double socket as well. Because you have to be able to plug in a hairdryer for herself. Right, so the next thing is now to drill this panel and screw in all these bits and pieces and then I can mount them back up on the wall and fit all the connections onto the back and then with a little bit of good luck it'll actually work well i have the monitor fitted there i'm not going to finish off this wiring here just yet i'm going to run the cables up from the the bilge and then i'll be able to put <laughs> that light back on i had to take this all off the wall here in order to get the drill in to get access uh, but i want to run the wire up here i want to bring it out connect it all up to my terminal block that all wired up i can put this switch panel back in there so now it's time to head down to the batteries in the bilge <sighs> so guys this is the shunt and i'm going to put this into the battery bay in the bilge in just a moment the first time when you look at the wiring diagram for this it all seems very very complicated but like i said this arrived out to my house a week ago i've had a week to study it and um, now i'm quite happy that I know what I'm doing. The first thing I'm going to do before I fit the shunt in is I'm going to remove these two screws and I'm going to connect up the cables. So what the shunt does is it goes on the negative side of the battery and everything from the battery has to pass through the shunt. Everything that's on the negative side of the battery that is passes through the shunt. Remember now guys I have kind of gone through the wiring di diagram quite a few times so it's not that I know what I'm doing, it's just that I've, I've done a, a lot of research on it. So this side of the shunt that I'm putting this black and white wire onto is going to go directly to the negative terminal on my domestic batteries. So I'm going to connect the negative terminal onto this. All the negative charge will pass through the center here and then from here it will go on to the negative bus bar, which is where all my power is distributed from. I put this yellow wire. So what the shunt does, in my understanding of it is, it checks how much electricity is passing through it and then 
it converts that into a signal that is sent up through these three wires here, the black, the white and the yellow, on up to that control panel that we've just mounted on, on the wall. Right, that is pretty much ready to go guys. I'm going to mount that now into the bilge. I'm after pre-drilling holes here to make life a little bit easier. I always believe in making life easy for myself. And I'll screw the fellow on there. And this fella should go on there nicely. Okay. Now, another piece, by the way, that came with the kit was this length of wire here. As you can see, I've done a bit of prep preparation. So I'm going to put that. Ooh, come out here, little washer. So I'm attaching that onto there. Now, I'm just going to finger tight, tighten that down for the moment. Right, so let me just move this camera and show you something. Right, this is the negative side of the battery. This cable here is simply going to another battery, which goes to another battery because they're connected in series. This is where all my negative voltage is coming from. There is nothing else connected onto this terminal on the battery, and that is an important point. So we're probably going to get a bit of a spark when we connect this. There we go. Get that washer on there. Get that nut onto the threads. And I'll just finger tighten it for the moment. And then have a little tube spanner here. And I put that onto it. It does say in the manual to be careful not to over tighten the connections on the front. Ooh. Okay. So now negative travels to here. The black and white uh, sensor wires are going back from there to the control panel. And from here, everything goes down here to my bus bar. Right, so as I say, this is the negative bus bar. In terms of connections, guys, the only other connection you get is this one here. This is the positive. So I'm going to put that over here onto my positive bus bar as soon as I have everything set up. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to run the wires back. So I just want to show you what we have here. We have three domestic batteries and this is just negative of this battery going to negative on this one and this black wire here. Can you really see that? Yeah, that is going connecting the other negative. So all my negatives are together. They come back here and then they go through the shunt. I had to do a wee bit of housekeeping beforehand because I had a few negative bits put onto this connection here. Right, so these big heavy cables, guys, they were running from the negative on the battery. They were actually hooked in here. Another one was hooked in here. And one of those goes back to each engine. So I took them off there the last time I was down and I brought them up to a good friend of mine, Porrick Brewster. He's a, an auto electrician up in Lanesborough. And he put these connectors on the end for me. So now I'll be able to pin them straight onto this bus bar here. The negative bus bar. And that keeps everything nice and clean and neat. So that's what I'm going to do now. Now, so that's the last cable fitted there. And there I have them fitted onto the negative bus bar as well. Right, that's one step closer. The next thing to do then is take the other end of the cables, connect all those back up onto the onto the sensor and then when that's done I'll come back here into the bilge and the last job will be to connect this fella here the live onto that bus bar over there. There's a few other little jobs I want to do while I'm down here in the bilge. I never much cared for this this wire here. Just don't like the colour of it because that's those who know about electrics will tell you that's actually an earth wire. So this is connecting the two negatives of two batteries together and creating connecting them in series. So I'm just going to remove that wire there. And this 
is one that Warwick Brewster made up for me and I'm going to replace it with this. Yep, I'm quite happy with that. So now I'm just at the point where I'm connecting up the battery monitor to the other end of that cable and it's simply white to white, black to black, yellow to yellow, red to red and nothing goes to the orange. This is the last wire that goes on at this end. I still have to connect the positive back down in the battery bay. So let's take those wires out of the way. I can chuck that back inside. All these guys here, remember, I still have to connect them onto this panel before we'll be, be really finished. But uh, I'm going to go down to the battery bay, I'm going to connect up the positive, then I'll come back up here, and on the screen here we should see a little bit of info. Let's hope it's good. You might be able to see that it's 13.1 volts in the battery, and we're not drawing any amps at the moment, because I've nothing turned on in the boat. So I'm just going to flick on a few appliances. Oh well, like, do you know what, I was actually going to turn on the fridge, but I, the reason I can't turn on the fridge is because there's a button for it here. <laughs> and of course, that's not connected up yet. When I was taking this apart, I don't know if you can see, I labelled each wire with a number, so that when it came to putting them back together, I'd know which is which. And the reason I did that is because these switches are all labelled. So I know what is what. Okay, so we have it set up, guys. You can see we have 13.2 volts or 13.1 volts thereabouts in the battery. We've nothing turned on, so we're not drawing any amps. And we're showing about 80, well, 82 or 83% battery capacity. What I have to do now is I have to tell the unit how many um, amp hours the batteries have. So we've got three 170 amp batteries joined in series, which means we have 510 amps in total. So I'm just going to press and hold this one here, I think, if I have it right. Engineering mode, yeah, okay. We're saying 480. I'm going to go higher than that, go to 510 amps. Back down. Now, that said, these batteries are six years old. In fairness, the uh, the cells in those batteries have probably weakened over time, and I would be surprised if we have really, in reality, got 510 amp hours. So I press and hold this, get engineering. Okay, in engineering, we can see we've set the amp hours. That's the battery temperature, 20 degrees, which is about correct, and zero amps, because we're drawing zero amps at the moment. So we go back to that, I can turn off the illumination, we don't need illumination. And if I flick the switch up above it here, you can't see it, to turn on the fridge, you'll see the amps going up, and there we go. This fridge is a, has a little Danfoss compressor in it. It draws, I think, about three and a half amps. We'll find out in a moment. Um, it'll draw that until it reaches a certain stage, and then it'll drop down to, well, I'm not actually quite sure, but I'll find out before too much longer. I'll have to wait for that fridge to actually chill before I can work out exactly what kind of amperage it's using. But it's using 3.6 amps at the moment. The batteries are showing 100%, which I'm kind of very surprised at, really and truly. The, the boat has been left for the past week, it's been plugged into the mains and it's had a battery charger on it. But I'm surprised that it's recognising that there is 510 amp, hour, amp hours in the batteries. So let's just look and see if I look at time. All right, it says we will get 136 hours from the batteries just running the fridge as it is at the moment. So we're up to 3.8 amps that fridge is drawing now at the moment. But as I said, once that has reached its working temperature, that'll drop away down and it'll just maintain it then. And I, The other thing I'm going to show you now is that's showing discharge. I'm going to fire up the engines in a moment and we'll see what kind of a charge is going to go into the batteries. I'm going to turn off the fridge first actually. So that'll go back to zero. Give it a second or two maybe. And I'm going to fire up the engine and we'll just see what kind of charge it puts in. Although given that we're at 13 volts it shouldn't put a whole lot in. So 
so now with the engine running you can see it says charge up here instead of discharge and uh, it was up there at around 30 amps and she's dropping down as the batteries or as the alternator rather starts to realize that there is a grand charge in the batteries and it doesn't need to put a whole lot of amps into it so folks i think that's kind of it i'm going to knock off them batteries uh, the engine there now right guys so that's the unit there fitted behind me it's working great the whole thing took quite a bit longer than i had expected um i was expecting to trim off wires i didn't uh, the wire i didn't think it would uh i would need the full length of wire i think there was five meters in it but again you run that wire through your your furnishings and in behind panels and all the rest you'd be surprised five meters is is definitely not too much the things that took me longer was the fact that I had two other panels I had the 240 volt socket on it and I also had that switch panel so all of those wires had to be taken off they had to be labeled and I had to drill the new panel I put on the wall to accommodate them so that all took extra time maybe you wouldn't have to do something like that if you were fitting one of these so guys we've had the unit fitted about a week now and I thought it'd be a good idea to come back to you and let you know what our experiences were with it and was our pros and cons and so on and one of the good things that uh, we found with it and i wasn't expecting this was one evening we were locking up the boat we knocked everything off and we were about to head away and we looked when i looked at this, the screen those still had drawn about half an amp and i said oh god don't tell me you have a short circuit or whatever but i went around and double checked everything and lo and behold i found i'd left one light turned on actually in a back wardrobe and had a knock at the unit there i did not have that information on the screen i would have gone off and left that running and the batteries would have probably gone flat while I was away so yeah it's that alone I think kind of made it a, a quite a useful device to have so as soon as the cars I as soon as I knocked off the light in the the wardrobe it went back to to zero amps which showed me I was drawn nothing out of the batteries whatsoever it's yeah it certainly is a useful device it's also another thing it's good for is you can go around your boat you can find out how much how many amps each unit is drawing so you can just flick on a light and see what that draws you can flick on the the radio the water pump the the fridge whatever it is and you can see exactly what it's drawing but simply the one best feature of this is that when you're not connected up to the the grid you've no external power supply you can go onto that screen and just see how many hours your batteries are going to last and it's a great bit of peace of mind to have that so yeah i think it was it was a good idea i should point out when we first had our problems up in Belique, when the alternator packed in, I immediately recalled watching a video by Kath from a YouTube channel called The Narrowboat Experience, where she fitted exactly this model. And that was going doing a loop in my head. I said, yeah, I'm going to have to get that. So I went back and I watched her video again, and I'm going to put a link in it down below. And Kath, thanks very much. The other thing is I've put a link in the description below for an amazon it's an affiliate link so if you want to purchase one of these you can buy it anywhere on the net but if you buy it through this particular link you'll pay exactly the same price but the channel will get a small donation from amazon guys thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the channel i hope you'll tune in to the next episode thanks for watching guys and if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up